Uh, the big story on the front page of the Sunday Times, and I think this is going to have real significance over the coming weeks and months, and congratulations to the journalists who've pieced this together. The headline is incredible. It says, China, the WHO, the World Health Organization, and the power grab that fueled a pandemic. And the first few words, I've just got to read them out. It's quite extraordinary. The World Health Organization missed its only chance to stop the COVID pandemic after a campaign by China to secure influence over its decision making. I mean, that is a bold, big, huge claim to make. And I think this is going to uh, to run and run. And so I really want to dig into this report in detail. We've got uh, with us, joining us uh, on this Sunday morning, Sam Armstrong, who is the communications director of the Henry Jackson Society, who's been very close to this issue of uh, looking really closely at uh, where, uh, you know, where COVID came from. Because if you remember, at the beginning, we were originally told that it came from the wet markets. That was the story. And that anybody else suggesting anything, such as it might have been leaked from a laboratory, uh, that was a conspiracy theory. Indeed, there was a British scientist, uh, Peter Daszak, who actually led a, uh, he instigated a letter, uh, I believe it was in The Lancet, that said that anybody suggesting it was anything other uh, than the wet markets, that it came out of the wet markets, and that the idea that it could come from a laboratory uh, w was absurd. Um, and yet actually now uh, everything has completely changed. So uh, Sam, a very good morning to you. Thank you for joining me uh, here on Talk Radio. I mean, I know you've been really close to this issue for some time. Uh, were you aware of this Sunday Times investigation? And what are your thoughts on it? You'll have looked through it in detail, no doubt. Yeah, well, look, I've, I wouldn't comment in any great detail, but it's, I think it's fair to say that I've spoken to some of the guys at the Sunday Times in some of their earlier investigations um, about COVID's origins. And I think it's a credit to them that they've worked really hard on a subject that, as you rightly say, was being swept under the carpet for a very long time. We've seen in recent weeks that at the New York Times, one of the Spectator magazine, there was a real effort to say there can be no looking at this uh, question of where the virus came from other than the official narrative at all. And then joining them in that were the social media companies. And the social media companies, the mainstream media, I would never say this in any other circumstances, but I'm afraid to say they did co-conspire to hide from the British public, the American public, what we're now beginning to see is likely the truth of where COVID came from, which is a spillover event within one of the two specialist COVID research laboratories that are in Wuhan. And, and I mean, that in itself is an extraordinary uh, thing, isn't it? That there are two specialist laboratories, they happen to be in Wuhan, and the one thing that everybody does accept is the virus came from Wuhan. So, you know, when President Trump, when he suggested that it could be a lab leak, he didn't definitely say, as I recall, but he said it could be a lab leak. I mean, he was he was roundly attacked by, uh, you know, by, by media and social media all over the world in the way that they always did with him. And in a sense, him saying it probably actually, uh, you know, did the cause of, the, of investigating into it. Um, it, it almost damaged it. Well, look, sadly, you're right. And it was just this instinctive knee jerk response to anything that Trump said. But you're right to pick up on on Wuhan. Wuhan is a, is a pretty random, pretty uh, uninteresting in most respects, Chinese city. It's, it's one of uh, hundreds of cities in China. Uh, it is thousands of miles, about 1200 miles away from the nearest caves that hold the horseshoe bats that uh, are the breeding grounds for these types of coronaviruses. And it is famous and unique for nothing in the world other than being the global center of study for these types of viruses, exactly the viruses we're having now. They have their own colonies of thousands of bats. And actually, I think these bat colonies are, are, are the sort of most interestingly, conveniently forgotten part of it. Yeah. Everyone's been saying, look, it's probably an animal spillover. Yeah, that's, that's probably right. But why on earth was it not even possible to say on social media for a year and a half the truth that these labs kept bats. In fact, they've gone and got patents from the Chinese patent office 
for cages in which you can breed bats. They wanted their own self-sufficient supply of bats here. And of course, when you're trying to work out how an animal virus goes 1,200 miles, yeah, sure, it can go in a market. Yeah, sure, possibly, maybe, you can look at the bizarre World Health Organization theory at one stage that it came on packaging from frozen fish. Yep. Or do you actually say, no, no, why don't we look at the colony of thousands of these bats where we know they carry, uh, th th they carry coronavirus and we know that they're studying them there and giving them coronavirus and then receiving that coronavirus and giving it to other bats. It was crazy. It was the simple explanation right from the start. Well, I mean, and, and the mainstream media, I'm afraid, in the United States in particular, yeah was so hell-bent on opposing anything that Trump did that they were prepared to suspend their their own sense of uh, suspicion, of investigation, of just basic journalistic instincts it's, it, and isn't in it, order but to it, get at Trump. Isn't it fascinating, Sam? Now that Joe Biden is in power, uh, he instigated, uh, he said he wanted a review by his uh, by his officials, his, his advisors. He gave them 90 days to report on... Uh, the likelihood that actually the virus came from a lab leak. And as I understand, that 90 days, that report is due uh, at the end of this month. And of course, he was widely um, applauded for, uh, you know, for that. Whereas, um, you know, President Trump, uh, he was attacked for it. You know, but I do think this is incredibly significant. And when you look at the detail of what the Sunday Times investigation uh, goes into, Sam, I mean, they actually show that China has essentially uh, tried to have a major influence on the leadership of the World Health Organization uh, for over a decade now, um, uh, alleging also that they even went so far as uh, to persuade uh, a change in the rules and regulations as to how the leader of the Director General of the World Health Organization uh, is actually elected. Um, and, and this seems to me, you know, quite extraordinary, the the ongoing influence um, and that therefore, essentially, China had an input into the previous director general, uh, Dr. Margaret Chan of the WHO, uh, and then had an influence in the election of the current uh, director general, uh, Tedros. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Because, I mean, yeah, this is really serious allegations that uh, that they're making. It's been talked about before, but... You know, this is this is really significant, it feels to me. Yeah, well, look, that's absolutely right. They lay it out in just scathing detail. And I'd recommend to any of your listeners that they go and buy a copy. And I, I, I can predict now that their jaws will hit the floor as, they, as they're going through it. But look, we know that China has been taking this. We knew that Ted Ross at Anamon was there hand-picked candidate to lead uh, and in return there was a feeling that he was rewarding uh, them for this he had a really quite bizarre record in ethiopia to be then taking over as health minister uh, head of the world health organization but we know that china is doing this across the board and it's not just the world health organization i'll give you another example the international telecommunications union it's the global body you've never heard of it but it sets all the rules on what your phones can do, how they interact with each other, the global regulation. Of course, we then see China sending along Huawei, ZTE, all these other firms that yep. got close links to the state, trying to get into the West, security fears from Western nations. But, oh, it's OK, because the International Telecommunications Union signed them off. Well, what China has been doing is for many years getting its people in, getting countries to vote for them. And it, and, Another and, statistic and, for you. China sends the vastest sum of its uh, foreign aid to small countries, to yeah. countries in the Caribbean, East African countries. Why? Because for a little bit of money, you can buy a lot of votes yeah. in these one member, yeah. one vote international. So, so, so the allegation here is that China uh, actually cancelled the debt that was owed by smaller countries who had a vote in the election of the director general and that China uh, cancelled uh, that debt as long as the, the country voted for, in a sense, uh, China's candidate. I mean, I should just state, of course, that the Sunday Times did ask the World Health Organization to respond to the claims, and the WHO put out a statement saying that the Sunday Times was rehashing old events, falsehoods, and baseless claims, uh, adding that the WHO's top priority 
is uh, ending the acute stage of the pandemic. Well, that's all very well, but these allegations, uh, I don't think uh, they're going to go away. I think they're really, really significant.